Right, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode of Break 40 is from Quinta de Marina in Portugal. We're here courtesy of Glencore Golf. We're going to spend a few days here, plenty of videos coming your way and a good look around this golf course. And we'll start with nine holes on this golf course and let's see if I can break 40. So this kicks off on a par five, 496 yards, first swing of the morning. And to be honest with you, it's always that sort of three quarter swing with me and a little bit tentative, but got one off quite nicely, right hand side of the fairway. And it went a fair old distance relative to that uh, fairly tentative swing. So yeah, we're away. Um, next up, this kind of bit of a bottleneck. So it's just an iron that I'm looking to play, uh, seven iron. A bit chippy down the fairway trying to get position which I did really happy with that easy to be greedy but you'll find out that it's a very narrow green that we're playing into so not the longest of holes and even now with this camera angle it's very difficult to pick out where the green is because it's perched um, on a slightly raised green two tier green slopes from front to back and it's very narrow as well and uh, reliving this moment I can almost feel me sort of tensing up and trying to guide one down there. And as you know, that never works. And with what was a fairly easy shot, it was only 100 yards or just over in. Then I leaked it out into, uh, well, a pretty wicked position. There is no green to work with. And over that rise, it slopes down to the hole. And this shot is probably the best one that we will see on the video today. Um, and as I turned around to Hannah and said, I was pretty pleased with that. And pretty pleased to say the least, bit of an understatement. So to give myself a chance of opening up with a par, mess in hand, fairly straightforward putt as I could see it, uh, and uphill, and I pushed it. So yeah, it was just um, after a sort of good first and second shot, perhaps left myself a little bit too long uh, of a shot in and should have been uh, a little bit of a longer iron. But anyway, there you go. Par three, water all down the left. Don't forget, just it's a guidey one. This is really hard to commit to a full swing when anything pulled to the left has disappeared. And uh, a kind of all right strike left me here. Well, we'll take the positive, it's pin high, but just by missing the uh, green by not a lot, I've got a horrendous shot back. And a little bit of a nervy one to say the least with that water right at the back of the flag. <laughs> So early on in the round. Right, not played from these bunkers either. Oh, that could be good. Sit down, ball. Oof, huge sight of relief, that one. Absolutely delighted with that. You're going to find out throughout this, you're going to find me cutting in and out with audio because we had a bit of an issue on the day. But here we go, for a par. What an up and down. Delighted. Right. Interesting start, two par fives in the first three, and this one's uh, weaves its way from right to left. A little bit unsure, but we're going to set it off for that sort of big tree left of centre, is my aim at least. That's not bad, is it? I'm going to talk to you about the driver that I've got in play today and a few other clubs, but this one is really interesting and uh, quite happy with the first two drives. Right, so as you can see where I finished, that, uh, it wasn't driver off the tee. It certainly needed to be a bit more of a right to left shot, if anything. And we're blocked out. You can probably see now, Hannah's just took a bit of a clip of what was round the corner. It weaves back to the right. So we're going to see if we can get this moving a little bit from left to right. Well, I think we're going to leave ourselves a long way in, but it'll do. OK, well, I just got that one wrong. I seen those bunkers down the right hand side and I assumed they were going to be green side bunkers. Hence the reason I said it weaved its way that way. I thought that was going to be where the green is. And those three flags you can see, I thought was the chipping area. But one of them is in fact the green. Anyway, we're OK. We're again a little bit of uncertainty in terms of where I was going. But no excuse this time. Flag straight in front of me. Ah, oh, it's nice. It was a nice pickup. It's downwind 160. I'm playing eight iron, and you can see the reason why. I just bounded on right at the front. So maybe it was a club short in the end. I brought putter, but there's a fair bit of uh, grass between 
me and the actual green itself so we're going to play a 54 wedge that's got a grab or go in I'll go in that'll do <laughs> how good is that that putter can go back in the bag a waste of time it's easy but that was going about 10 foot past let me tell you so it's fair to say not swinging too good at the moment this um out of interest is a heavenwood which i've really enjoyed playing this again and you'll see a lot throughout this course on the front line it's about position rather than distance really happy with that swing okay. and uh, in a good place in terms of the tee uh, just leaked a bit under the trees and it bounded on a bit so i've got to hit one keep it low and you see that last branch fall means that uh, yeah a really good strike but got a little bit greedy and uh, duly punished i suppose and yet again the sort of poor tee shot has let me down um, but now i've just got still only a wedge in hand greens are all small so it's just a case of can i find that green and again as you can see me watching it back swing not looking great right now a little bit of a pull down the left and uh, we're on the putting surface but that's the only positive i can really take right we made it onto the green but another yard or two and uh, this all slopes in and gathers at the flag but then having said that i didn't know there was such a severe runoff on the right hand side as well so i think well we're probably in the right position but it's a case of can we just get this one down by the flag somewhere and walk off with a bogey a little bit more last well, decent pace it needs to be a lot wider again but hopefully if we can finish this one off and uh, after the second shot clipping the trees I think we've got to we've got to accept our bogey there Today's video comes to you in association with long-term channel travel partner Glencore Golf Holidays and we are at Quinta da Marina in Cascai, Portugal. The hotel and golf course have been a superb place to play and stay in the Portuguese sunshine and the proximity to Lisbon Airport and nearby Cascai make it the perfect European golf destination. So if you like what you see in today's video, then make sure you click on the link in the video description below or head on over to glencoregolf.com for more booking information. I haven't seen any let up a lovely little par three. I've just sapped it at 150 exactly to the flag. I've got a bit of a reduced set of irons with my personal irons because I've brought a lot of clubs to test. So I'm playing eight iron, but we probably want a seven in terms of that slightly elevated pin position or well, green keep it easy and okay well that's a nice swing it's just whether or not we've got enough club get up and up stay there all right pretty much exactly as I called it it was one club too short but we have stayed on that front fringe if you can pick that up and it didn't fizz back into the bunker so we'll take that so the shot for me here is just, uh, well, it's a chip and run and trying to get it bumped up that hill as far as I can. Perhaps played it a little bit too firm, but I'd take the shot from there. And yeah, I got a bit of the hole, but not enough of it. And uh, again, probably duly punished. You can't keep trying to get up and down from those situations and walk off with a bogey, but a great golf hole that is. Right, back onto the mic and uh, let's see what I've got to say. Loving this drive, you know. That's what I can report and uh, just a great ball flight. It's a new driver from Exio, which is a product line I've never tested before at all. That's a drive you've seen off the first two tee shots in terms of those par five. Here's another par five and I've got to say, so far it's gone exactly where I expected it to or hoped it would rather. And uh, it seems to be getting out there, so we'll talk a little bit more about this one later on. Right, again, par five, not 100% sure of the line, but what I'm zapping is the big tree directly in a straight line from me now. That's 186, so my thought process is go towards that tree as long as I don't, or as I pick a club that can maximum in terms of distance go 186, then I know, in theory, I shouldn't be in any trouble. There's nothing between me and the ball, in other words, that are going to uh, land me in a difficult situation. That's the plan, at least. 
but I was interested it was a six iron I've struck it really well and uh, I should be in a decent position right well that yardage was good by the way that tree I referred to is just to my left probably not on camera but we probably played that six iron about 180 I've left 63 in and I've got a, uh, a 60 degree wedge Which looks quite good. Tugged it a bit left, but I think that's the right distance. Oh, we shall find out. Well, yeah, again, it was right yardage, so good in that sense, but I've literally pitched off this bank or bounced off this bank, and you can see the line into the sand. So I'm not really happy with where I've finished up. There you go. Right, it's going to have to be soft, this is. Get in. Oh. Right, I'm really pleased with that. That, believe it or not, is a, uh, there's a smile in there somewhere. Right, come on, no messing. At the middle. I'll do, that's a good up and down. Shouldn't have been there though, to be fair, 60 odd yards out. So a little par three, stunning golf hole, uh, 138. I've gone and played um, a 9 iron, dug in a bit, as you can see. It's just not the greatest day on the course for me. Um, after this, this basically was played after uh, arriving, just been on the flight and transfer. That's what I'm blaming. Uh, like this chip shot, though, just got to flick it up over the rise and let it gather down to the hole and really well executed. Well, with all the par threes, I mean, I missed it short again, wrong club, but it's such a difficult up and down quite pleased with the shot I played. Come on, in the middle of the hole. No, nope, that's drifted away. Ah, oh, dear me, right. Bogey, ah, annoyed with that. So back onto what is a par four, and I think from memory this could be stroke index one. Again, you'll see it just leaking out towards the trees, and uh, yeah, should it, Okay drive, but not great. Right, okay, half decent drive, but we're into the breeze and I've still got sort of, saying 180. Still into this flag. It's stroke index one, this one, by the way. Come on, and Yeah, that's a good ball. Just all that line. All that line, it's just drifted a bit. Not too sure whether that's me or the wind, and I don't think it's quite got there either. Good strike, though. Right, so we perhaps came up a tad short, I suppose, at least from the flag and a bit of breeze into. Let's see if we can play a 56. And so I suppose I should talk a little bit more about the type of shot I'm trying to play. I want to carry it to the front of the green. That's the shot I'm trying to play, at least anyway, and then let it release. Sit down. Well, I literally carried it further than I wanted to, which is uh, hence the reason we've gone a little bit further past than I wanted to. It was okay. It was maybe a six out of ten. Again, having to make a bit of a putt here to, to make a par. Come on. Positive stroke. Nah, just drifted off again. Do you know what? The greens are they're quite subtle because the brakes are there, as you can see, that one drifted away again, but they're not obvious when you're looking down at them, and uh, again, that one's just drifted away. I did not read it, it wasn't a bad stroke, it was just I did not read the green. Right, 155, par three to finish. It seems a mixed bag of almost par threes and par fives. I just had a quick tally up, I'm four over at the moment. I've not hit the ball brilliantly, I'll be honest with you, but I think slightly tentative because of not knowing my way round. Right. A little breeze into me, which is really nice because it's really warm out here, but it means I've got it a good shot. Come on, and let's finish off with a nice, nicely played iron. Well, it's not nicely played, but it's right at the flag. Go and keep going and keep going. So, yeah, left audio packs in again. Uh, just a little bit of a chip shot over the rise into that bank if we can. Kill it a bit, let it run out to the hole. Sounds great in theory, but it wasn't too bad in execution either. And uh, I've got a chance to make par on the ninth with, uh, like I said, what was a, a nice chip shot. Yeah, Mez does its bit.
Right, that's my first nine holes of Kinsa the Marina complete and uh, from a personal perspective, playing-wise, a little bit scrappy, didn't always strike the ball perfectly, really enjoyed that driver which was that Exio, uh, which I'm really interested in looking at in more detail over the next few days, really enjoyed playing that. The other clubs that featured that aren't always in my bag was the Heavenwood that you've seen from Callaway, again, only hit I think one tee shot with it but absolutely loved it back to the score itself four over par I think I would have got five shot holes on that front nine so in theory maybe played uh, two one under my handicap but it was an okay round nothing majorly great about my own performance enjoyed it being out in the sunshine here in Portugal at Quinta de Marina don't forget if you fancy this place go and check it out with Glencore Golf and uh, see how you can get to play that same nine holes right we're carrying this on it's going to be part two of break 40 on the back nine